All right, so we're we're back, and um, I just wanted to uh, kind of clear some of some of that stuff up. So. So being human and, and humanity is uh, is extremely important. There's some uh, some other pieces that I want to I, I kind of want to add to this as we kind of talk about some of the the c cultural universality of of the human experience, right? So um, as we we kind of deal with that stuff, I want to add. That we, again, we're always human, and that our humanity cannot be divided. We cannot be a divided creature as it, per, as it, is, as it pertains to our humanity. So, um, so those things become extremely important for us to, to realize and recognize. So we're, we are always human, and that our humanity is... Uh, is foremost and paramount, right? So, one of the things that we'll, we'll I, I, I want to talk about is this concept of um, authentic humanity versus this, this kind of pseudo humanity or this false humanity. And then we'll start to get into some of the things that Alfred Adler talks about in terms of, of humanity. So there is this, uh, this authentic humanity, and then there is this, this false humanity. And I'm going to flip over here to, to my notes to, um, to get the best illustration of this point out of my notes. So if, if you don't mind, I'll, I'll just kind of flip through. Um, find that part. Uh, and then uh, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about, I want to come back to this concept of the void. Right? So the free market capitalism said that they can, they can answer that void. But we'll, we'll, we'll come to, back to that in, in just a second. So authentic humanity um, it's summed up in these particular points of view, the, these ways of, of thinking about how we're human. So first of all, we are always human. So no matter how we get, how, 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 how we get treated, rather, uh, we, if we get treated well or we get treated negatively, whether the systems that we're engaging in want to identify us or not as being human, um, Regardless of how those systems try to interact with us, it is a truism that we are always human. So authentic humanity starts with the fact that we have to understand that we're always human. And so as a human, there are certain inalienable rights, right? Inalienable rights, those rights that cannot be separated from my humanity. And among those are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And so we'll, we'll talk about... Uh, some of those concepts as well. And so um, human is our natural state, right? So what does it mean to, 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 to be human? Uh, human beings are, are uh, a soul, they're a body, and they're a spirit. And, and the yearning of that, that soul, that body, that spirit... Uh, is, is constant. We're yearning for freedom. We're, we're yearning for liberation. We're yearning for connection. We're yearning to, to, uh, to produce uh, the, the purpose for, for our existence. Those are the things that we constantly yearn for as humanity. And so humanity is our natural state. So it's natural to be human. That is the, the, the place, the, the way that we've, we have uh, been born. That is our natural existence. Um, and so what that means in that natural existence, it means that we're, um, we're, we're born to, uh, to seek relation, to be relational. Right? We're born to be relational. We're born to um, 
have and meet our basic needs, right? So Abraham Maslow talked about that, air, water, food, shelter, the, these, these basic needs. So, uh, so we're natural, and, and our rights cannot be separated. The rights for these, these two things cannot be, cannot be separated, right? They cannot be taken away from us. Um, or, or, however, they, they should not be taken away from us because uh, of our human, our, our human status, right? So it is our right to have those things. Even if they're uh, systems that are trying to take those things away from us, they are still our rights. Um, number three. Number three is that social institutions... offer false humanity. That social institutions, by their nature, do not offer authentic humanity. They offer pseudo-humanity or false humanity. Um, and, and we'll talk about that. We'll talk about why that is in, in just a bit. Um, number four, when we start talking about uh, authentic humanity, I want you to keep these things in mind, that we're always human, that humanity is a natural state. We're, it is natural for us to be relational, to, to have and, and get our basic needs met. That, that is uh, our human nature, and that our rights can't be separated from our humanity, or they should not be separated from our humanity. And that social institutions, by their nature, offer a false humanity. Um, number four, race, gender, and class distinctions are membership status, which also support this false, uh, false reality. And so uh, race, gender roles, and class distinctions have nothing to do or are not related to our humanity or should not be considerations for our humanity. I am not less human because I am a part of some uh, nation state's definition of, of race or that I... Uh, have been uh, born without my choosing into a particular gender group, uh, thus being subjugated because of a decision that I did not make myself, or that because of the uh, the nation state's class uh, system, its its hierarchy, that I am subjugated or less human. Uh, so there is no relationship between race, gender roles, and class. To my humanity, there, there's, there's no relationship, there's no ratio. I am always, number one, always human. Number five, that choices are, choices are rationalizations for the disappropriation or, or misappropriation or the inequity of power structures. So, so, um, so choices, or the, the, the ability to make choices, is, is inauthentic humanity. Now, I know that's a, a, a hard thing to think about because we, we really pride ourselves, particularly in the West, on giving people choices. Uh, but unfortunately, the choices that we typically offer people are not authentic choices, right? So um, what, what, what societies do is they offer certain kinds of choices to provide, to, to direct certain types of behavior, right? So for example, you have the right to smoke. You have the right to smoke. You have the so-called freedom to smoke. Um, there, there are stores where you can buy cigarettes. There are uh, places that you can buy tobacco and you can buy the, the papers to roll up your cigarettes. You have the choice to, uh, to, to, to smoke. However, to, to exercise that choice, the society has set up something that is uh, a, a deterrent to you smoking, which is what? High prices. Right? So to, to, to exercise your choice, given this political environment, given this, uh, the, this economic system that we're engaged in, the, the choice is yours. But the society has set a false choice because what they want you to do is to not smoke, but they give you the choice to smoke, 
given certain stipulations and parameters. And so that is, so the idea of choices is, is false humanity. Because systems, governmental systems, societal systems, societal institutions give this, 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 this false choice, right? So, so choice, so, so if we're not having choice, what is authentic humanity? Authentic humanity is understanding the relationship between cause and effect. So because I do this, there are some impacts to my behavior. So, so it's not so much about my choices, it's about the cause and effect of what I'm doing. So if I do this, what is, so, so authentic humanity is not trying to drive people to make choices, but having the understanding that there is some impact of your behavior on you and those people around you. That is authentic humanity. Um, Point number six about authentic humanity, that dehumanization the understanding of, of, of trying to, you to, to get you to believe that you are less than human, the process of trying to get you to believe that you are less than human, the process of trying to get you to believe that you are less than human is an illusion. It is an illusion. When you buy into this concept that you are less than human, it is an illusion. When you say that you are a particular race, it is an illusion. When you say that you're a particular economic class, that you have a certain amount of status, all of those things are illusion because at the end of the day, you are only human, right? So, so as many riches as, as one can... Um, as one can uh, 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 accumulate as many degrees and papers and success, at the end of the day, you're going out of this world the same way you came in, and that's by yourself. Hopefully, you'll be clothed. But 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 you you you. So this this process of dehumanization is an illusion. Uh, point seven. And so if I succumb to this, this um, dehumanization illusion, the only way that I am not human is if I lay down my humanity. If I make the choice to not act in the best nature of human, uh, 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 or, or, or in the, the, the best nature of a human being, if I'm not practicing being human, then the only other choice is for me to act like an animal. But I, to act like an animal, I must lay down my humanity. I must lay it down. And so um, one way that I, I might lay it down is that I don't take responsibility for the cause and effect of my life. Right? You know, so you know, people sometimes refer to um, men's behavior as, as problematic. Um, um, and, and you'll hear people refer to, to men as if they were animals or, or talk about them as if they're animals. Well, part of the reason that they do that is because someone along the line has forgotten about the cause and effect and that we're always human. And so if I don't believe that I'm human, uh, then I won't act like I'm human. And if I don't act like I'm human, what am I acting like? I am acting like an animal. Now, I will say that I, I find it very interesting that as I was growing up, and we looked at the people in the neighborhood, and we looked at the, uh, the, the, the folks around us, the language that we used to define ourselves was very telling about the times we were growing up in. And so, you know, you can lay down your humanity. Um, the, the interesting thing about that, though, is that you can pick that humanity back up, right? So how do we, what are some, some, some ways that we know that people have laid down their humanity? We have things like wars, War is, is people not living up to the best that humanity is, but they're laying it aside to say, my belief, my, my, uh, my, my seek to um, keep my way of life going is so more important than yours that I'll lay down my humanity and I'll kill you to, to, get, what I, to get what I want. And so when we talk about laying down humanity, when people forget, they fall for this illusion, they, they, they riot. 
They, um, they commit suicide when people have, have forgotten what is true and good about them, the, 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 the thing that they have purpose and power, that they can do things. When they fall to this dehumanization um, illusion, they lay down their humanity and they do some of those things. We also understand that depression is a, is a way. Um, when people uh, succumb to post-traumatic stress, right? When we when we've pushed people as far as they can go and they, they snap either emotionally or, um, or, or mentally, um, we have, we've created an environment where it becomes uh, oftentimes easier to lay down my humanity than to, to actually struggle with it and, and keep it intact. Um, anger is another way that we lay down our humanity. We act against our, 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 best, uh, our best nature. And number eight, that false humanity, this idea of false humanity, is an attempt to dehumanize. So, so false humanity is, a, is an attempt to dehumanize. And so let's talk a little bit about what, what false humanity is. What, so when I say false humanity, what, what is that? Well, we know that authentic humanity is, is these things. And so false humanity is... Here are a few things that false humanity is. False humanity is membership. So when a uh, when a nation state has members, its members are declared to be human. Look at the uh, the, the, the current uh, debate about immigration in the United States. Look at the, the current debate about uh, what ser good services um, that people should have access to. Think about the, uh, the debate around um, health care, voting rights, all of these things, right? So um, there are certain things that members get that non-members don't because the nation state is offering false humanity as a status of, uh, of their participation in that nation state, right? So um, when, when, when a nation state offers this false humanity, we get products of that false humanity, such as the concept of race. Race is false humanity that is given by nation states as a, as a product of, of membership. So because, it, 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 and, and this is how this starts to work. In the United States, I am African American or black. However, if I was in South Africa, I might be colored because I'm not an indigenous African in Africa. What we've, what we've come to understand about race is that it is a political construct designed to organize people in a particular kind of way. And so uh, if race was biological, if race was um, anthropological, meaning that uh, I could look at a, an artifact and say this came from this particular racial group and this belongs to this racial group, or, or back to biology, if I could look at this particular gene and say that no other human beings have this gene except for this particular group of people, then I could come and say that, that race is a thing. And race should be, if race is biological, if race is anthropological, Whatever a, a, a person's race is in the United States, it should be the same as it is in Egypt. It should be the same as it would be in, in Guam. It should be the same as it would be in, uh, in Siberia. So, so all of these, th this concept of race should consistently show up the same over and over and over again, no matter where 
people are, but in fact, that is not the case. That race is a condition of membership, which is the 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 uh, the, the, the the usurping of or, or the providing of this false humanity. And so, because I am a particular race, given my nation state, then I get certain membership privileges associated with what it means to be a human being. And so, race is is false humanity. Also. What else, is, uh, 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 what else supports false humanity? This concept of freedom. Freedom it supports the idea of false humanity, right? Uh, and, and freedom is very much related to this idea of choices. Um, freedom is conditioned upon the membership of a nation state. So because I am a member of a particular nation state, I am allotted certain freedoms. And when I do something that is, that is an infraction on that nation state, they will take away my freedoms. So the freedom, the concept of freedom, is a false humanity because it is based on membership to a nation state. And so nation states do not define what it means to be human, because I was born human. And so um, and, and instead of freedom, what should we be looking for? We should be looking for liberty. Now, what's the difference between freedom and liberty? Freedom says that if I don't follow the rules of the nation state, if I don't do what the nation state says, they will take my freedoms away. Liberty says regardless of my membership in the nation state, regardless of, you know, all of these other confines that the nation state says that I have to, um, that I have to be subservient under or, or work within the parameters, I am still human. One of the things that really puzzles folks is that, um, and, I, and I, I've heard this from a, a dear friend of mine in terms of the incarceration of Native Americans, and why uh, being incarcerated does not seem to be a, a deterrent for, um, for many Native Americans or, or for Native Americans that my, uh, my friend was referring to. And the, the, the thing that is very interesting is that uh, my friend was sharing that for many Native Americans, one place is the same as another place. Or another way to say it is that there is no difference between this place and that place. And so whether I am um, on the res, or I'm in prison, or I, um, I'm in um, this part of the world versus that part of the world, um, in the grand scheme of things, according to my friend, um, there isn't much difference. And so if I don't see the, the taking of my freedom as a deterrent, it's very hard for the system to, uh, to, to, to control me or to uh, monitor my behavior. And so what happens is that oftentimes Native Americans sometimes don't even recognize it, that they have a liberty that other people don't have, right? And so um, th th this, this, this is false, false humanity. So race is false humanity. Freedom is, is a false humanity. Um, class, status, is false humanity. Because I've been able to accumulate wealth, uh, accumulate uh, status within the, the, this nation state, does not make me more or less human than anybody else, right? So, so race, uh, freedom, class, status, um, and again, gender roles... that are assigned by the nation state, these are all things that support false humanity, pseudo-humanity. And when I believe these, that these things are the things that make me human, then I fall to the dehumanization. I am, I am, uh, um, I, I become disgusted, I become frustrated with the system because what I know to be true is that I am always human. I'm always human. But the system doesn't treat me that way because I've, 
I've succumbed to what the nation state says about me. I find it very interesting. What happens when your enemy defines you? Because when the enemy defines you, they don't use the best terms to, to define who you are. They use terms that reinforce their, uh, th their status as the defining um, as the defining um, method of creating um, your, your perception, your reality. All right? So uh, we have authentic humanity and we have false humanity. All right? So we're going to take a, a short break and then we'll come right back and we'll, uh, we'll get to the next chapter. All right, thanks.